The Great Migration The Great Migration of African Americans out of the South into the Northern States began slowly after the Civil War, but increased dramatically in the early 1900s. Between 1910 and 1940, approximately one and three quarter million black Americans migrated north. A number of push factors caused them to leave and various pull factors attracted them to the northern cities. With the Great Migration came many new opportunities and many old problems for African Americans in cities like Chicago, Detroit, Philadelphia, and New York. Why did black Americans leave the South and migrate North? As black Southerners struggled to survive as farmers on small plots of land they rented from white landowners, a series of agricultural disasters hit them hard in the 1910s. The boll weevil wasted cotton crops across the South, and powerful floods hit farm areas in Alabama and Mississippi. Between 1906 and 1921, white mobs attacked black neighborhoods in southern cities and rural areas. Economic hardship and violence convinced many black Americans that they had no future in the segregated South. Heading north to improve their lives, African Americans flowed out of the South in three great streams between 1910 and 1940. Most blacks who left the South were born after slavery's end in 1865 and had no personal experience of slavery except what they had heard from their parents or grandparents. Blacks from the Carolinas and the Upper South headed into Philadelphia and New York, while those from Georgia, Alabama, and Mississippi often ended up in Detroit and Cleveland. Others from Louisiana, Arkansas, and parts of Mississippi rode the Illinois Central Railroad to Chicago. Black newspapers in the North encouraged African Americans to move from the South, and railroad car porters aided the new arrivals by exchanging news and information. Because World War I caused labor shortages in northern factories, meatpacking plants, and stockyards, black southerners were able to find jobs, though competition for them was fierce. Large numbers of migrants created distinctive black communities throughout the North where black-owned businesses, medical clinics, banks, insurance companies, social clubs, and churches catered to people's material and spiritual needs. To help African Americans from rural areas of the South adjust to life in northern cities, organizations like the Urban League helped new arrivals find housing, jobs, medical care, and legal assistance. Black Americans brought their culture north as well, including the newly flourishing New Orleans music, jazz. Jazz musicians came north for the same reason that other people did, failing crops and discrimination in the south. When they began to migrate to Chicago, Black Southerners were one more minority among many. Chicago's location as a major railroad hub drew many people, especially ethnic minorities like the Polish, Germans, and Irish who came in search of work. As the number of black Chicagoans swelled, racial tensions increased. A city-wise housing shortage forced African Americans to crowd even more densely into an eight-square-mile area that soon became a segregated black neighborhood. In July 1919, 
a race riot broke out in Chicago after black workers were used to replace striking white workers. The governor called out the Illinois National Guard to restore order, but 23 blacks were killed, along with 15 whites. By 1920, more than 75,000 black Americans had moved to New York City's upper Manhattan area, making Harlem the quote-unquote Negro capital of the world. It was here, more than any other place in America, that African-American culture flowered most fully. In numbers large enough to form a black metropolis, African-Americans created the Harlem Renaissance through poetry, works of art, stage and theater productions, jazz clubs, and wonderful varieties of music. Shuffle Along, an all-black show written by jazz musicians Noble Sissel and Yubi Blake, opened on Broadway. The first all-black musical to have mainstream success, the show combined jazz music with jazz dancing and launched the careers of such jazz singers as Florence Mills and Josephine Baker. Africans in America, even under the severe limitations of slavery, had always created a distinctive culture of their own. But given the freedom and opportunities of northern black communities, African Americans began to fully unleash their creative potential. Louis Sacmo Armstrong Born the grandson of slaves in 1901, Louis Armstrong grew up in the poverty of segregated New Orleans, Louisiana. But his early years were enriched by music he heard in church and overheard from nearby dance halls and saloons. As a young person, he sang in street quartets for money and learned to play the cornet during his years in an orphanage known at that time as a colored waif's home. By the age of 17, Armstrong was playing professionally and attracting notice. At 21, he moved to Chicago at the invitation of his mentor trumpeter, Joe King Oliver. In a well-known incident, one radio station refused to announce Armstrong's name because he was African-American. Despite racism he encountered, however, Armstrong was one of the first influential jazz artists to play in integrated bands and in front of integrated audiences. Since segregation continued in New Orleans well into the 50s, Armstrong had no desire to return there. One of the world's best known and most popular jazz musicians, Armstrong performed throughout the United States and Europe, appeared in films, and recorded extensively. The beloved Sacmo continued his live performances until shortly before his death in 1971. 